Hello everybody, this is Jeremiah Harrison and Michaela Harrison with Liturgy of the Home. And we're coming to you from our art studio again. You may have noticed the last video had a little change of background where we're doing some of these recordings in our and back in the in the art studio where the girls are doing all the artwork. We're coming to you uh, on this the 17th of July. Tomorrow is the 8th Sunday after Pentecost and uh, come for a week, weekly video where we walk through the saints and uh, the saints coming up this week and read through the gospel of tomorrow's tomorrow Sunday and just before we get started I just want to say one brief thing I don't want to say too much already so much has been said I'm sure many of you know the news that just came to us of the motu proprio from Rome and uh, I think a lot of people are saying a lot of things you know it does seem to be it looks at first glance to be not good but Christ is king no matter what we have to go through you know we're doing this project to try to to lift up to try to dig up and to represent the ancient liturgy of the church, the treasures of the church, the saints. And as we go, and every week we do these little videos and we, we talk about the lives of the saints even so briefly. And I know you're doing it more and more in your homes with your children. That's what we have to be like. We have to imitate them as best we can and, and know that our Lord will provide what we need when we need it. So I don't know what's going to happen. I've even heard news that some, some parishes have already been shut down. Um... You know, there's, but Christ is King and we will go forward and we will keep drawing and keep, you know, keep preparing the calendars, keep doing our, our little part as, as oblates, uh, Benedictine oblates, and we'll see where God takes us. I so. would say in a way, it's like we're not quite on the front lines, but it's no. like we're kind of in the back trying to help catechize the children for the next wave. <laughs> yeah. No. You know, so we're we're still doing our little part in I don't, the. I don't think this is going anywhere. This is a what two thousand year old tradition. It's not going anywhere. It may be a battle. It may be a, a difficult. We may be entering a very difficult time. It's hard to say. It's hard to say, but, but uh, we'll just as long as we keep passing it down to our children. That's what we're here for. So, as we share the saints, we've got some awesome saints this week. Yes, you know, we do. We will. They're they're all in heaven praying for us, interceding for us. I mean, really, when you, when you think about that, when you think of what they've been through, like some of the stories we're going to go through, I mean, what, what do we have? What do we really have to be f fearful of or to lose when you consider that these saints are interceding for us so we can, you know, we, we, we can pray for them and intercede for us? So They're on our side. Yeah. Well, they're, uh, of all the church. I mean, my goodness, this is like... <laughs> well, I mean, against our side as in the forces for good and yeah. then against the forces that would try to tear it down. Wherever they Wherever that be. is. <laughs> Well, we'll begin. I want to begin. I'm going to shift here to just the reading of the gospel for tomorrow. You know, this we, and uh, the gospel comes from Luke for the 8th, Sunday after Pentecost. And uh, at that time, Jesus spoke to his disciples this parable. There was a certain rich man who had a steward, and the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. And he called him and said to him, How is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship, for now thou canst be steward no longer. And the steward said within himself, What shall I do? Because my Lord taketh away from me the stewardship. To dig I am not able. To beg I am ashamed. I know what I will do. That when I shall be put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. Therefore, calling together every one of his Lord's debtors, he said to the first, How much dost thou owe my Lord? But he said, A hundred barrels of oil. And then he said to him, Take thy bill and sit down quickly, and write fifty. Then he said to another, and how much dost thou owe? Who said, A hundred quarters of wheat. And he said to him, Take thy bill and write eighty. And the Lord commended the unjust steward for as much as he had done wisely. For the children of this world are wiser in their generation than the children of light. And I say to you, Make unto you friends of the mammon of iniquity, that when you shall fail, they may receive you into everlasting dwellings. Do you want to read the little commentary about yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Just a little paragraph yeah. that might be helpful to some of the children, especially so. while we look at these pictures. So it's written here, it is, it is not the unfaithfulness of the steward after his disgrace that our Lord would have us imitate, but his foresight. Almighty God has placed this world's riches at our disposal. Instead of using them, as is often the case to do evil, whence their name of mammon of iniquity, let us make use of them by helping those who have them not. Charity is the key which opens heaven. It says St. Jerome, If the master 
injured in respect of his rights, praises the foresight of the steward, who knows how to take care of his own interests, albeit by fraud, how much more will, I, will our divine Redeemer, who cannot suffer any loss, and who is always inclined towards leniency, praise his disciples when he sees them treating with kindness those who should be believers in him? St. Jerome applies the same principle not only to temporal goods, but also to spiritual ones. If, he says, the fruits of injustice wisely dispersed are turned into a means of doing justice, how much more shall the divine word in which is no injustice and which has been entrusted to the apostles, if rightly dispensed, raise to heaven those who dispense it? And that comes from Matins. The reading from Matins. So... Very good. A little bit of a confusing gospel sometimes for children. But yeah. I think yeah. that if we if you explain that to the kids that we use the things of this world not in and of themselves and for evil, but use them for good. That's 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 what God is asking us to do. Right. And you know and so many of the collects of the church they all seem to have this common theme over and over again to to despise the things of the world and to desire the things of heaven for us to pray that god make us desire heavenly things to to pray you know to, it's, it's a giving it's, it's a giving thanks for god's gifts but asking god to convert us to make us want only that which he has to offer all so many all the codex of the church if you read read them uh in the in the old missal have i see this theme unfolding so many times mm -hmm. and uh i suppose if you if you're not too attached to the things of earth, you could be open to, uh, you know, unorthodox ways of dispensing for the good of others, right? Yep. <laughs> All right. I think we'll go. Our first saint this week, Saint Vincent de Paul, on July the nineteenth, and uh, it was one of the. There's something. One of the things that interested me about him is when you read about his life, he grew up on a farm, and you see one of the things that shaped him was early in his life he would be uh, he would be as a shepherd out with the cattle for hours and hours at a time and it was in that time just out in the woods out with the cattle in the fields that he learned to pray and why did that strike me is because if you look at the story of St. Patrick of Ireland when he was taken and captured as a slave he was made to watch the sheep for six years he was put on Mount Slemish mm -hmm. and day and night he watched the sheep and that is where he learned to pray and so it just struck me how many saints have been in this school of prayer a lot <laughs> like this with the sort of simple hard rude life whether it be caring for the animals or as a slave and how this laid the foundation for all of their time so an interesting story about saint vincent uh when he was young is he had to take a trip to marseille to pick up a legacy that a friend had left behind this you think of it as an inheritance a large sum of money and he had to take a voyage by ship, and he went on his, on his way back. He was waylaid by pirates. The ship was waylaid by pirates, and he was taken captive into uh, one of the countries in the Middle East where Islam, Islam reigned. And while he was there, he was sold to numerous, numerous masters. Some who treated him poorly, and some who treated him well. But eventually, he ended ended up in the hands of a master who was a lapsed Christian or an, you know, an apostate. And his his influence on him is he brought the man back to the faith. And he and the man set off, and then they made it back to Europe. And so St. Vincent is most well known for his ministries to the poor. Um, he set up many houses of hospitality. And is, I mean, just very well known for all of his ministries to the children and to the poor. And he lived uh, a long life. He died at an old age of 85. And he passed from this life uh, quietly and was uh, canonized in 1737 by Pope Clement the 12th. So this is a beautiful image Isn't here. Isn't that lovely? Because like St. Vincent, he was, a very, he, was, he was very smart. So he's, everywhere he went, he was very compelling in bringing souls back to Christ. And so this is an excellent image. I think of him giving like a, a dissertation and, and people returning and returning to our Lord. Lovely. And then here's the coloring page. Such a sweet picture. Yeah, I really like that. That's actually that's one of my favorites. Well, there's another one. The saint you're going to go through, mm -hmm. uh, St. Lawrence. That's probably my favorite this week. But this one, this is a close second. Also, uh, St. Vincent de Paul is the saint that my sister Kateri chose um, to write her story. Um, 
the story on. So if you want to read that story, and if you remember, go into the members area and you can access the story, both the written story and the um, audio that our good friend uh, Joe recorded. Yep. He's, he's got a wonderful voice. It's a good voice. one. You'll like it. I, I, at least I did. Yep. All right. All right. It's my turn. St. Jerome Emiliani. Um, so he was born in Venice. Actually, both the St. Uh, for this day and the following day, both were in the Venice um, area, <laughs> uh, just 100 years or so from each other. So he was in the 1400s. Um, his, he was born to a Venetian family, and his uh, father died when he was a teenager. He ran away from home when he was 15, and he joined the army. And while he was defending a fortress, he was captured. Um, I should go back to the other one with the chains because I'm going to tell this story really quick. Oh, so yeah. he was captured and he asked to be um, delivered and um, he was able to escape. And in Thanksgiving, he brought his chains to a, a special um, shrine of Our Lady in Thanksgiving. And after that, uh, he returned and he went on to um, go ahead. You can go, go, go to the next picture. He went on to uh, help um, the orphans, and he worked with the poor a lot with the children. So he he actually is um, he he is the heavenly patron of all orphans and destitute children. That's his particular role. Um, so I have a few pictures of him, but uh, it's amazing with these saints. It's like there's something that happens to them earlier on that kind of wakes them up, and then they go on to do such wonderful things. Not a beautiful picture of him with Our Lady mm. and the children. Yeah, yeah. Um, Saint Jerome there it Emiliani. Is. Yes. Patron saint of orphans, Italy, fourteen eighty six to fifteen thirty seven. Yes. Okay. All right. Next. This will be a fun this, one this for some a... of the the boys might especially be excited about this. So this is. Um, St. Lawrence um, of Brindisi, and he was a Capuchin friar. He also was born, uh, well, actually, sorry, he went to school in Venice. He was born in Naples. Um, but he was, he was a great scholar. He knew, like, five languages. He knew Hebrew so well that when he was sent, I think, by the Pope to um, kind of, to, um, what do you say? To, to try to convert some of the Jews, the Jews thought that he was a convert hmm. because he knew Hebrew so, so well. well. So anyway, but he went on. Um, this is a picture of him leading the charge in freeing um, uh, freeing um, a town in Hungary from the Muslims. And so he just had a crucifix and he basically, he led the army um, in that battle. And um, after after that, he 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 was the elected as the the head. Or sorry, I think even before that, he was elected the head of the order, and um, of the Capuchins. Um, the Capuchins are uh, Franciscans, but they're a particular branch. And um, Padre Pio was was a Capuchin, I mm, believe. That's right. Um, but uh, later, uh, when he was elected, he he wanted to live a quieter life. And um, so he, he declined. <laughs> um, so and what I, a neat picture. I really like this picture. And you okay. see this sort of expressiveness, you know, this struck me as the same, the sort of expressiveness you see of him. The leading, strength. Yeah, the strength. Yes. All for the greater honor and glory of God. That's right. That's right. St. Lawrence of Brindisi. Mm -hmm. And now we have... Saint Mary Magdalene. This is a big feast day. This is a big feast day. She's known as the Apostle to the Apostles because she was the first one to announce Christ's resurrection to the Apostles. Um, I have three images here, and I want you to note that they're all, they're from totally different styles. This one is, you know, classical, neoclassical, more realistic looking, but you see how Mary Magdalene is reaching out towards Christ, and Christ is turned away from her with his hand uh, sort of outstretched saying, you know, do not touch me for my time has not yet come. This is right after the resurrection. It's a very famous scene. 
So now go to the next one. So here's an icon. You see this similar posturing. She's on her knees reaching out and he's kind of his body slightly turned away. Um, okay, it's this mm. icon. And then this is more a little more medieval, like Fra Angelica time period, but same thing here. Um, Mary Magdalene had a great love and devotion for, for our Lord. And um, even after his ascension and all the... Um, disciples and apostles went out to like the four corners of the world to preach the gospel um, she and several other um, apostles were said to have gone um, in a boat to France and so um, I have some pictures uh, I thought the kids would like to see oh here's here's her at the foot of the cross that is just such a sweet picture she's all four gospel accounts share this now um, some there's there's uh, there's debate as to um, she's she's recorded as having seven de demons expelled from her. Sometimes she's linked uh, as the woman who is caught in adultery. That's not that's that part's not as clear. Um, but she obviously um, helped our Lord in His mission. So here, this is an image. This is really interesting lighting. I know children might be kind of like, well, why is she holding a skull? And this is really important because in mm -hmm. Catholic art, this is used over and over again. The skull represents death. And we are constantly told to prepare ourselves for like, death. Keep death always before us, Bec remember. Because then we know not to get attached to things of the world because right. we can't take them with us. So remind the children, don't be scared when you see the skull. It's just a reminder that there's much greater things than what we have in this world that we won't be taking with us. So store up for yourselves treasures in heaven. And this is such an interesting picture with the lighting. I thought... I think I thought it's just it's so important. To, we have to strive to have this proper orientation to the life of this world, right? I mean, because in our modern day, everything is about this worldly life. I mean, even look at the response to the, the the whole covid pandemic thing the the uh rush to be so extremely attached to life you know to even sacrifice you know the, really what is what is greater you know uh, our faith the sacraments and so we've got to have a rightly ordered relationship prepare for a good death right to prepare ourselves for for a happy death for for, for a provider for death and in catholic art this has always been, I mean, in liturgy, in, in our faith, this is reiterated over in, in the rule of St. Benedict. It talks about this, to keep death always before your eyes. And if, I just want to say to parents, if children are kind of spooked by that, which, you know, with Halloween and our culture, it's very easy for kids to be like, oh, that's, you know, spooky or whatever. Um, but it's really important to to help children to transition through death. So don't, we don't, it, death is not the end. Right. I've heard a beautiful way of saying it is death is like waking up, waking up to the next life. So it, it's a bridge. Um, so maybe that that could be helpful too, to children. Um, well, you could say, is it being born? There you I go, mean, it's another way. To be, to, all of this life is like uh, being in the womb, the womb of the world, and you are born to, to eternal life, right? Yes. So it's meant so. to be a, a source of contemplation and joy for us. So anyway, so I know we were on that one for a little bit. Um, I put this picture in because this is a picture. This is St. Mary Magdalene on the left. You see how she's holding the little, um, oh, what's it called? It's the thing that held the spices. So when she came to the tomb to anoint our Lord's body, mm. that's, that's what she's holding. And um, this is one of the ways you recognize her in art. And on the right side, that is St. Catherine of Siena. And St. Catherine of Siena had a great devotion to Mary Magdalene and had a vision of her. And Mary Magdalene basically called Catherine her sister. Um, and so there's a wow. special kindred sister relationship between these two saints. So I wanted to put that in there. That is neat. Yeah. Um, this is a picture. So uh, let me go back to what I was saying before. So Mary Magdalene ended up in France, as the legend has it, and she spent 30 years in the wilderness uh, in penance, acts of reparation. And um, I'm going to, this is a picture, this is a painting of her out in the wilderness praying. Um, but I'm going to show some pictures. Um, okay, this is her, this is her final communion. Um, I will say, there's, it's really hard to distinguish between pictures of her and Saint, of, of Saint Mary Magdalene and Saint Mary of Egypt because their pictures are really similar. So this one is, is um, shown as being Saint Mary Magdalene, but 
I sometimes wonder if it's Mary of Egypt because they're so similar in their final communions. Mm. Okay, but let's go on we to... Have, well, I'll skip this for now. We'll go because you're talking about... Yes. So this is the cave. This is... Uh, I forget what it is in French. Uh, has a special title. But this is a cave in France, way up in the mountains. You can't... You have to hike 45 minutes to get to this cave. Um, they've built a little... Um, I think it was a convent It was built around it. Um, so this is a statue of Mary Magdalene being brought up to heaven by the angels. Um, they say mass in the chapel there. You have to climb up these really winding steps to get way up into this mountain. Um, but some of her mm. remains are there. Her skull is there. I think some of her hair might be there. Um, um, so it's just a, it's really fascinating. I fear the kids would really appreciate getting to see what the inside of this cave looked like way up high. Now, and I, I, th- I think they said that when you're up at the top, you can actually see out to the ocean. The ocean's way off in wow. the distance. Um, there's a few more pictures, right? Right. We've already shown these. I was just, okay. Yeah. Is there any more? Did I just have these it's three? The last okay. One, and the one okay. looking down. Okay. Which, which you showed. Uh, but so. if you look up St. Mary Magdalene's Cave, I'm sure you can find you more. That. I would love to go visit there someday and make and a little here, pilgrimage. Here is the, the black the coloring image page. that we made. We yeah. can post. Which Doesn't Rose do such a good job on she these? She does. She really does. <laughs> I think she, she does, does such a fantastic job. All right. Next. Your turn. My turn. St. Apollinaris. On July the 23rd. Now here with this saint, we have gone back to uh, the early, early church. So this is an image here of St. Peter. You see the keys. Uh, we see because Apollinaris was a disciple of Peter. And it was interesting is uh, at the beginning. So, you know, Apollinaris, he's, he's, he's a disciple of Peter. He's with him for quite some time. He's receiving all of his training. And it said that one day Peter said to him, why stayest thou here with us? Behold, thou art instructed in all that Jesus did. Rise up and receive the Holy Ghost and go to that city which knows him not. And Apollinaris received Peter's blessing and off he went. And he went to, uh, he, was, he became a, eventually the Bishop of Ravenna. And he converted many souls to Christ there. And then this, you know, so many of these early New Testament saints so have amazing you know, ama- things amazing happen around them wherever they go. Well, the same thing. So he goes, he preaches. Many, many, many are uh, converted. But the priests at the temple, the priests of the idols, they seize him and they have him severely beaten. And after this, uh, at his prayer, a nobleman there in the town uh, receives his speech again, who was dumb. He could not speak. And his daughter was delivered of spirits that had, had possessed her. And then new seditions in the town rose up and he was eventually beaten with rods and forced to, to walk over burning coals. But when these did not injure him, they drove him out of the city. And he went into other places. He went into another city and he raised from the dead the daughter of a uh, Rufinus, a patrician. And then the whole family believed. And then the prefect there was angered and once again had him tortured on the rack, had boiling water poured on him. Um, but he continued on. These things... Uh, it's, he continued to go through all the area, and I think he, he lived a long life. And eventually, he one of these beatings that he received um, near death. A group of Christians took him and rescued him. And he had seven. These were the last seven days, and he exhorted them. He exhorted those Christians to stay strong in the faith. And then he passed from this world uh, and obtained the crown of martyrdom in the next. So the Bishop of Ravenna, early early church. I feel like it's there we go. Saint Apollinaris. Caring oh. for the sheep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what did our Lord say to Peter? Peter probably said similar to Saint Apoll- to Apollinaris when he sent him out. That's right. And this uh, this is it's very small, sorry, but this is a an image of his last beating before he died. And then Bishop of Ravenna, circa first century. So, I mean, as we go through what we're going through now, uh, saints have been through worse. So let us ask for them to pray for us and let us just persevere. If he could tell the Christians who had rescued him from a beating that he was to die from to stay strong in the faith, never give up, well, then can't we do the same? With God's grace. Yep, with God's grace. With God's grace. I think, does that bring us to the end today? Yeah, should we... 
I know we don't have a... We're making good progress on the illustrated calendar, so right, I think we'll right. show you all a little preview next week. Yeah, next week we'll have some uh, previews for... Because now we're, we're into Christmas. We're, we're, uh, she's illustrating Christmas. Advent is being painted now, all the... Uh, Colors being put to it, and then she's designing Christmas now. By then, you'll probably have Christmas fully designed and probably even partially colored. Yeah, probably. So, well, very good. Well, thank you guys so much for your support, for your prayers. Uh, we'll pray for you, pray for us, and we just keep going. God bless.